Hello, I'm Charlotte Collins and welcome to The Sheer Luck Show. On today's show, we have four high street looks with Patricia O'Dwyer, delicious autumn lunch inspiration, interiors tips with the designer of the moment, a come shopping with me and lots more. So firstly, welcome to today's panel, Sherry, Polly and interior designer extraordinaire, founder of interiors label Poodle and Blonde, and star of the new Changing Room series, Winnie Williams. Hi, Winnie, it's lovely to have you. Thanks for having me. I, I like kind of want to talk about Changing Rooms. I feel like that's, <laughs> yeah. not, that's not on the agenda, but how is it? <laughs> it's wild. I mean, what fun. Absolutely wild. Like, it's just meeting Lawrence, like, I'm just obsessed. He's like an icon to yeah, me. So actually is. meeting him, yeah. I was like, I was just lost is, work. Is he oh. as flamboyant in real life? Yeah, he's like worse in real life. Like, <laughs> he's, he's like, like a comedian. More flamboyant. Yeah. yeah. He just yeah. like exclusively wears like three piece leather suit the entire that. time. I love that. Wow. Yeah. What, what a yeah. vibe. It's very untrained. Yeah, what a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not here to talk about Lawrence <laughs> Wellerberg. <Wellington. laughs> cool. And we are going to talk about TikTok because the Sherlock TikTok, we have had it for a while. However, it's now, it's getting, it's live and kicking. It's up and running and I wanted to know how into TikTok you guys are. It's obviously, I mean, it's, it's probably, the, it is the biggest social media platform out there, isn't it, I think. But some of us, some of us of a certain age have been quite slow to <laughs> embrace it. Definitely. Polly, you're, you're kind of on the... Oh, thanks. You're, you're there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right on it. No, I, for ages, I was like, I can't do another form of social media. I'm already obsessed with Instagram. I also felt like I was too old for it. But you know what? It's very addictive mm, it and is. it's quite mm. fun. I just, I feel like I use it for like funny stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I just like, it makes me laugh. There's a few people I really enjoy on there who give me a giggle and if I'm just, okay. I need a little pick me up, that's no enjoy. <laughs> Sherry, you agree? I agree, yeah. The algorithm is so good yeah. and it's so specific to your, I guess what you like. So all of mine is very like low level celebrity drama. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, is, it, is it good for Hun culture? Is that why you're you like it? culture. Yeah. These two are, are yeah. a Hun. Yeah. I, I am a Hun. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you one of us? <laughs> Welcome. Safe um, but yeah, that's all of my my feed. But it's also so good for recipes as well. Okay, yeah, really good that's for inspo. Fair, that's fair. Winnie, are you a big TikTok user? I think TikTok really shows off how weird you are as a person with the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like mine is just like horses psychology and like Ooh. foraging in the woods for mushrooms oh, and that stuff. Is, that is that's quite a weird collection of bits. It is. It's very harmful. Um, uh, yeah. But that's but, into that. Yeah, and that's why people like it, isn't it? Because, you know, you can have this really kind of highly curated edit yeah. of yeah. things you're into. It's very yeah. in tune with what you like, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, it's kind of more like a search engine, right, people say, than... Well, yeah, this is what I found stuff. out recently that... I don't want to say kids these days, but they use it like Google. Yeah. Like if they're looking for a place yeah. to go for ice cream in Soho, they'll yeah. put that in and that's where you find it. I was like, that is very smart because yeah. you can see it very visually. Is, yeah. To be fair, I did find, I was just thinking, so I'm not a big TikTok user, but I should have brought, I brought it upstairs. That's really annoying. I didn't bring it down. I found like it was an Amazon hacks thing or something yeah. and it's like a little hook for everyone at Shirt Lux is rolling their eyes because they're like, she's talking about the hook again. But it's <laughs> it's a hook for your handbag in your car. You know how you can have like a hook for a table? Yeah. But it was like four car. pounds before and it hooks around. So rather than, I, I've got a messy dog who, you know, scobbles all over my uh, car. So to keep your handbag, or an, or a husband who just throws it on the floor. Yeah. So to avoid messy dogs and husbands, your hook. Oh, send me the link. I was, yeah. no, I've got two upstairs. So Do you want one? Yeah, that's yours. That's my car, um, thanks. All right, anyone in particular that you love following, Sherry? Oh, I don't actually follow anyone. Oh, I just go off oh. the recommended. I know mean, it's quite wow. rogue, but it's rogue. my recommended is so good. I was like, why would I stray? This is all I need. <laughs> I, so think, I, I think it's called for you. Oh, this is the you page. <laughs> yeah, 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 mm -hmm. exactly for me. Winnie. Yeah. Or for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyone that you love following. Do you know who I'm weirdly into? Is that Julia Fox? Oh, yeah. It's oh. really oh. like, she just says rat, like she's kind of fascinating to be like, what is she talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She really is yeah. quite controversial. Like the thing she comes out with, yes. but she's just quite, Sort of, I'm curious to yeah. what she's up to. She's yeah. fascinating. But yeah. the thing with TikTok, it is like a black hole of your time. Mm, as soon as you're is. on it, you're like, I'm. This is going to be two hours. So am I ready for this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to really but invest. I don't know. I'm just really into following like the sort of forage and stuff mm. with yeah. nature. Yeah, um, I didn't even know there was an area so, of TikTok for that. Yeah, like I learning think a bit of stuff like that. Of TikTok for yeah, for yeah, yeah, I like yeah, the education part of it. I think that's when it's useful yeah, when yeah. I'm like learning yeah. stuff. But a bit of celeb yeah. gossip. Yeah. It's kind of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Any, anything you see? Anyone there's, you follow even? Yeah, there's a girl called Ash Holm and I can't say anything other than that she's just so funny. Like, I, I don't know, I can just literally lose hours just going through her videos. Like, <laughs> she's naturally very, very funny. Like her hot takes, everything. She just makes me die laughing. Okay. 
Yeah. Great. Well, there we go. Through entertainment, educational. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, all right. Thanks, guys. Next, Patricia O'Dwyer showing us how to look chic and elevated on a high street budget. Take a look. Hi, I'm Patricia O'Dwyer. There are some amazing pieces on the high street, and I'm going to show you today how, with some very simple styling, you can create some really elevated looks. First up is this absolutely stunning satin dress from Zara. Satin is such an easy material to turn to when you want a really nice, luxurious look. Obviously, this is a gorgeous dress for the evening. It's got this beautiful cowl detail at the back. But if you wanted a slightly more relaxed look to take you into the daytime as well, a really easy way to do that is to pair it with a nice, chunky knit. I love the structured shoulders on this for a bit more of a contemporary feel. And paired with some knee-high white boots, you've got the perfect winter white look. Some days you just want a bit more of a cozy look and leggings and a jumper is an easy way to achieve this, but that doesn't mean it can't be elevated. Stirrup leggings are such a trend this season and I love them for adding a little bit extra to a simple look. For this, I have decided to pair it with a nice, cozy knit but I've opted for something a little bit more oversized to balance out the look. To toughen it up I've decided to pair it with some nice chunky loafers. I've opted for this lovely and other stories bag with a nice woven detail which just pulls the whole look together and to finish it off I always add some nice chunky gold jewellery which never fails to make any outfit look more polished. This next look is the epitome of Parisian chic. French girls just never get it wrong. I've gone for a simple white t-shirt paired with some mid-wash denim for an easy day-to-day -day look. But the real hero of this outfit is this gorgeous cardigan with the gold hardware and these beautiful pocket details. It's giving all the Chanel vibes. I am so here for the return of the ballet flat. It is a trend that I am so into this season and I just think it absolutely works with this outfit. To finish off the look, I've decided to pair it with this gorgeous bag. The gold hardware will tie nicely in with that cardigan and it just brings together a perfect look that will stand the test of time and last you for years to come. Black will always be an easy go-to for a good blazer, but for this final look, I've decided on this gorgeous grayish blazer from H&M. I love the double-breasted design for that slightly cooler vibe, and I always size up in my blazers to make the outfit look a little bit tougher. For this look, I've opted for some dark wash jeans with a nice cropped leg, which will look gorgeous with those ballet flats again. For a bit of interest, you can always add a slogan t-shirt. I have opted for this one as the black detailing will nicely pull the outfit together. The finishing touches for this look would be a good belt and a nice crossbody bag. I hope you enjoyed that and it gave you some inspiration for some amazing looks you can put together from the high street. All the outfits will be linked below and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much, Patricia. The high street really is it's just nailing it this season. I mean, the high street nails it every season, doesn't it? What, what did you guys like about the video? I thought she looked so chic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. so good. That white outfit with like yeah. the shoulder pads, I just thought it was like epic. Yes, the exactly. cream, cream white, that dress. Cream white, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like the... I love wearing all white, but in places you shouldn't like festivals. Oh, like anywhere sort of muddy. Yeah, yeah. Wild yeah I really dangerous. like it. Yeah. It's like, I think it's a look. So yeah. a danger white outfit. Danger yeah. white. Maybe she like pleather and then you can wipe it. Exactly. Wipe clean white. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to go back to TikTok now because there is a TikTok, a celebrity, a TikTok celebrity called Mr. G Teacher. I'm sure he'll be coming up on screen now. Um, who is inspiring his students by doing TikTok dances with them and getting them to come out of their shell. Anyway, he's be he's become a TikTok sensation. So it got us thinking about teachers and our favourite teachers. Mm. Do you guys have teachers who really still, all these years later, um, stick in your mind? Sherry? Yeah. I do. Mine was Mrs. Khan, shout out. Um, she was lovely. She was my English teacher. Um, I think she taught me at AS and A level. And I just was a little bit low key obsessed with her. I was like, "You're so cool. I would be your friend." Was but she like young and trendy? Way. She was young and trendy, but she kind of like made books really cool. That sounds really silly, but like, oh, I get that. yeah, it just really inspired me. And that's mainly why I did English at uni. So yeah, Aww. she was yeah really great. That's cool. Aww. That's yeah. lovely. That's Winnie, you have one. I have, um, so there's a lady at my school, so I was really into art at school, that, mm. but there was the art cupboard 
which was a room, but you'd go and buy your supplies from the art cupboard. There's a lady called Gina that worked in this cupboard. Yeah. And she just like, I was so obsessed with this woman that she'd covered the walls in sort of collages of like Japanese magazines and really kitsch weird stuff. And I just, I'd never seen anything like that. And like the 60s and 70s like portrayed yeah. in such a cool way. So we'd just hang around and like every lunchtime in this cupboard. Yeah. And she'd make me canvases to paint on and stuff. Mm. And um, we're still in touch. Oh, oh that's that's so nice. Yeah. So she actually sent me a book last week. Oh, that's oh, so um, lovely. She's like, I've got four of these vintage interior books. I'll send you one. I'm that's like, so of course cool. you've got four. Oh, yeah. And what does she do now? Is she still a teacher? I think she's retired now. So oh. yeah, she wasn't a teacher. She was just like always there ladies. and like for advice. And she was in a band. Oh, she's she was so like, cool. Yeah, she's still in band. She's just like the coolest person. Wow. So oh, she's such a yeah, Shout out to Gina. Gina. Yeah. Amazing. Shout out Gina. Polly, have you got anyone who springs to mind? Yeah, my form tutor when I was in secondary school, actually, he was just like super encouraging, always like quite good banter as well. And like when I was at school, I wasn't the most confident, but I really felt like he brought me out of my shell and like encouraged me to try things and do things that like maybe I wouldn't have done otherwise. So yeah, shout out to Mr. Heesman. If you're watching, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> like, definitely his target audience. Definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was great. Do you have one? I do. I have Mrs. Neistry uh -huh. was... Um, my A-level French teacher and she was she was quite a, a little bit older and um like terribly scary so strict so scary and so when you were in year seven kind of upwards she everybody was terrified of her yeah. but the fun thing about her was then when you got to A-level she was like your best oh. friend and I, I was like she was she was such a stickler for French pronunciation and that whole like international and like the sound is like it's just so hot and I will oh. think of that every time I the infrequent times that I bring my French out um but she was just just amazing you know when you'll just never forget someone she was yeah awesome. I don't know where she is now but sounds like an icon this is history um all right next up we are talking soup niche you might think but here at Sherlux it is the source of much conversation isn't it Sherry so now is the time of year when the cute little microwave really get started. So Sherry and Heather uh, went for a bit of a taste test and here's how it went. <laughs> I was not expecting that flavour. No. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our new cooking segment, Sherry and Heather. In the kitchen together. Hey. So for this new show segment, we're going to do lots of things food and drink related. We're going to do a little bit of cooking, some taste testing, and yeah, trying different products in the food and drink department. So today, first up, we're trying soups for autumn. Yeah. And we're going to try some of the best rated supermarket and soups you can buy right now in the shops. Cool. Okay, first up, we have Yorkshire provenders, roast chicken and vegetable soup. Ooh. So let's get stuck in. This looks quite, uh, quite hearty. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Exactly what you want at this time of year. I was going to say, on a cold day, that would be absolutely perfect. Mm. Mm. Also, if you're not feeling very well, mm. like such a good... So, good point. Get me well soup, yeah. Mm. Oh, I really like that. Out of ten, Heather? Okay, I'm going to give it a strong eight. Strong eight? Mm. Oh, okay. What about you? I'm going to give this one a seven. Fair really enough. tasty, but we're going to start... Not too high. I was going to say, I'm sure the best is yet to come. Exactly. There we go. Right, I'm really excited about this one. So it's bowl and it's all plant-based, but it's, yeah, cauliflower dal with some sweet potato. And I don't know about you, but I can smell it all already and it smells really curried and gorgeous. Let's have a try. The colour's really nice as well. Mm. Ooh, mm. that's really nice. Mm. A bit of sweet corn in there. I think mm. I taste some garam masala. Yep, there will be if there's a dal. Yum. Oh, that's mm. really nice. This is a solid eight from me. Oh, see, I already gave the other one an eight. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to give that an 8.5 then, I suppose, because it was better than the one yeah. before. But no, that's really, really, really nice. Yeah. So next up, we've got Renourish, which is a really nice brand. The packaging is really nice. Really but nice. Is it style over substance? We're not sure. Let's so, find out. Exactly. So the first one is kale, spinach, and turmeric. Oh, let's get a good dunk. Mmm. That tastes very healthy, I would say. Mmm. This one's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's not that, doing, yeah, it, it's giving me, <laughs> let's say pop, no, not pond water. <laughs> Hang it's on, I need me, to try it. It's that, when I said it tastes very healthy, as in like, <laughs> it's very green it's very, it's very green. I like it in the sense that I would feel I was being really healthy when mm. I was eating it. And I don't yeah. dislike the taste. What would you give that out of 10? I would then? give that out of 10. Four. Ooh. Yeah, not my favourite. I just don't think it's going to fill you up. I reckon, yeah, seven for me. Okay. So this is another one of theirs. Okay. It's um, tomato, basil and passion flower. Pa what's passion flower? I'm not sure, but it just said it on the <laughs> ingredients. But hang on. It says it here. <laughs> Look, passion flower. <laughs> 
It says, here we go, passion flower, <laughs> which can help you sleep and feel a little less stressed as part of a healthy lifestyle and balanced diet. I'm sold. Right, go. Okay. Oh, this is nice. Okay, I'm going to try the bread again just for fun. Mm, I prefer this one. Mmm. Rich, rich tomato-y flavour. I'll be generous. I'll give this one a seven. This okay, nice. okay, yeah. I think for me, 7.5. Like, oh. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Okay, next up, we've got spicy chorizo soup from Pratt. I'm excited about this. Me I too. love butter beans. Mm. It, does, it smells really good, doesn't it? It really does. Although, I feel like you have to get to Pratt quite early to get the soup. To get the soup. It sells out quickly. That's really nice, yeah. Smoky. Definitely getting the chorizo, mm. some red pepper in there. Flavour-wise, though, really good. I really uh, like yeah, it's one. a really nice colour. I like that. Same. What would you give this one, Heather? Yeah, probably like a seven, seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel with the soup, you do want it to sort of fill you up a bit, don't yeah. you? And I think with the butter beans, that definitely does that. Yes, what about I would you? give this a seven. A seven? Yeah. Okay. So pretty good. So we both like Asian foods. Mm. I think we're both excited about this. But Very. this is a noodle soup where you just pour in the broth yourself, so hot water from the kettle, but it's also got mm -hmm. prawn gyoza as well. I'm excited for this Me one. Me too. Ooh, that broth's really nice. Mmm. Mmm. That is nice. It's very light, isn't it? It is, it is. Mmm. I'm going to try a... Try half a dumpling. That gyoza. Yeah, that's oh, really nice. That's really well, it's got good. loads of flavour in, but it's not really spicy or anything, so I think people would it'd be mm. a, a crowd pleaser. It is disintegrating a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to give this one a nine. Ooh. I'm going high. No, this is delicious. Yeah, I'm going 8.5, but yeah, mm. really nice. Okay, next up we've got Parsnip and Rosemary Soup by Bay's Kitchen, which is a brand I haven't actually heard of. I don't of. think I have. It came in a nice sort of squeezy pouch, yeah. but it doesn't look appealing, let's be honest. No, but it does not. I love rosemary and love parsnip, so I'm Me feeling too. hopeful that this is going to... Exactly. Mmm. <laughs> Hang on. Ooh, ooh. I'm going, I'm going through a range of emotions here. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor. No. Give okay. it a try. Wow. <laughs> That's horrible. Something what in there just not taste quite right. Mm. Well, it's three forty-five. So if you wanted to give it a try, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I thought you'd say so. At least you haven't wasted your money. But no. <laughs> also that. And that. I would give that a four. It would have mm. been lower, but for pure entertainment value, because. That was a true yeah. surprise. I'm glad you felt the same. Yeah. What would you give it? Four point mm. five. I feel yeah. mean. I love no, parsnips. No, that's okay. We okay. can't love everyone, but no. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Final one. Gales. Yes. This is a soup of the day. Mm. Let's see how it tastes. Okay. I can see it's got some kind of pearl barley I in love there. Pearl barley. Me too. Okay, I well, love it. Okay. Let's not get our hopes up just in case. Mm. No. Oh yeah, that's very autumnal. I find it quite underwhelming. I, I don't mind really that, you know. I'm I'm trying to like scoop up all the pearl barley. Yeah. I'm enjoying that sort of Me textural too. element to it. The pricing with some bread. Oh, that's a good idea. The dunk test. Mm. Yeah, see, I quite like that. Me too. Mm. Definitely a grower. Mm -hmm. After every spoonful, I like it more. So that's good. Yeah. Mm. Great. Out of ten. Seven and a half for mm. me. I'll give it a six. A six. I like it. I don't love it. Thank you so much for watching. That was so much fun. Please do let us know in the comments if there's anything in particular you'd like us to test taste next time. And thank you so much to my mum for making these personalised aprons for us. See you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. I mean, that was literally the most wholesome content ever. <laughs> we talked about the aprons festival. She did, yeah. She made them on her sewing machine at home. So Haberdashery cute. queen. So yeah, <laughs> thanks, mum. <laughs> um, I was quite disappointed that you didn't love the pumpkin and flower from Gales because yeah, it was excellent. It was nice for me, but not like the best. It's a top top mark. It's number one. Mm, yeah. Where can we buy that locally? The Etsy one. Is it uh, Waitrose. Yeah. Okay. Waitrose. Lunch, yeah. Sorted today. Nice. Um, we're going to move on from soup and talk about. Crown, which is causing quite a lot of controversy. So season five is coming out and I'm going to get this right. So this says, viewers will be taken back to the 1990s with episodes covering the period around the breakdown of King Charles and Diana's marriage. So according to reports, this season is covering some conversations in which Prince Charles, then Prince Charles, tried to oust the Queen with, um, the Prime Minister's name's gone from my mind now. Anyway, John Major, 
with John Major. John Major has come out and said, that's rubbish. The crown is awful. It's salacious. It's not true. Blah, blah, blah. So I want to know where you guys stand. I have a really strong opinion on this. I mm. want to know where you guys stand on it. Winnie, do you watch The Crown? <laughs> and what is, how do you feel about it? I've never watched it. Damn really right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, how yeah. come? Because obviously, it, it, you know, a lot of people are obsessed with it. So is there a reason if you deliberately pursued it? I like trash telly. Mm. <laughs> I yes, like, yes. <laughs> trash, so, yeah. It's too highbrow. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> Polly? Yeah, I've never watched it either, and I really feel like I've maxed out on Royal Family content over yeah. the last few weeks, so I'm just like, oh my god, I can't believe we're still talking about them. <laughs> um, but I kind of, I know what you mean, like, it's a bit of a weird grey area of, like, you know, obviously people will take that as fact, so they ha I'm surely they have to be quite careful with how they dramatise it, because people will think, well, that's obviously true, but then if they're like, oh no, actually, it's based on historical events, but it's fictionalised. This is it. Like, yeah. that, that is my issue with it, that it's taking... And this is the same reason that I didn't watch, like, that Pamela Anderson. You know, they had the whole thing with their sex tape with Tommy mm, Lee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel profoundly uncomfortable about the idea of someone else telling someone else's story. Do you know what I mean, Sherry? Yeah. yeah, I do. I don't know. I think the royal family is a strange one, especially now. I think it's quite... People are quite divided. They either agree or they don't agree, especially with the monarchy and... I don't know, I feel like the least they could do is give us a little bit of drama from um, the crowd. <laughs> Honestly, I personally love it. I think it's so good. Acting is 10 out of 10, right up my street. Really? Yeah, I do. I mean, and no, also, a lot of people agree with you, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, also. not everyone will agree, but I think with Prince Charles especially, I, I think he has his own, you know, he says his own things that people can decide about him. So I don't think the crown necessarily will do that much more damage than he's done, in my opinion. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. That's an opinion. Um, yeah. but, but I guess the thing is to, it's one thing kind of reenacting historical things that we know happen or that happen publicly, but mm. yeah. the idea that these conversations and something is like the idea that now King Charles tried to oust the queen, that's quite a controversial statement Massive. to make without yeah, a kind of disclaimer that it's, Fiction. Do you guys mm. agree? Yeah. Colin? Sorry, no, no. no. I was just thinking, like, it's so clearly, like, based on real people and real events. It's just mm. such a, yeah, I yeah. feel like it's quite punchy to be doing that. Yeah, mm. that's my problem with it. True. I also tried listening to, um, we were just talking about audiobooks, actually, and I tried listening to Anna Wintour's biography, which is written by an American journalist. And so, A, it was, like, the same thing. Not only is it not her life in her own words, and it's also something about when the people are still alive as well. I'm like, ooh, yeah. don't they have an opinion? But also, yeah. this woman, she had an American accent, and every time she, like, put words in Anna's mouth, she put on an English accent. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. It. It was that awful. is weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Not for me. I won't be watching season five. I think it's abhorrent and it's not, you know, we shouldn't be taking people's lives for entertainment. No. That's my opinion. Anyway, <laughs> uh, coming up, Winnie and I are going to be chatting all things interiors from how to decorate with pattern to the secret behind good design. But first, did you catch our very special extra show earlier this week? No You're getting a lot no of love over there. No on the back of my neck. Right. I mean, I actually fabricated that question. That question is from me. <laughs> Back to oestrogen, which is our uh, sort of hero hormone. Well, oh my God, I think I'm having a hot flash. See, <laughs> we need an episode on menopause. I love the fact that we don't have to have age appropriate hair now. They take care of your skin and give you a bit of color. No, <laughs> that's right. Oh, they've had the final no. say. I'm back with Winnie now. I mean, your CV is wild. <laughs> Pop stars in there as well. We'll talk about that later. Um, but, you know, interior design extraordinaire, founder of your own brand. I mean, you really, you're really good with colour and pattern Thank and you. print, aren't you? Where, where, did, where did interior design come from? Was that post pop star life? Yeah, so I, I always, I run my music and art together when I was younger. So I went to um, London Art School to do a set design. Mm -hmm. So I just love to create a scene that I yeah. could sit inside and have a cup of tea. Lovely. So that was sort of why I did it. Yeah. And then was sort of doing set design for different music videos. And that was like a little side hustle that I was doing. And then I translated that into my own place. Like when mm -hmm. I got my first house, I was like, I, it doesn't have to be white walls yeah. and grey carpet. Like I could live in Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. It's a different vibe, isn't it? Yeah, Everybody's but this is me now. Place. But you know, like, in my early 20s, I was like, I can live in a 70s movie. Can we talk about your shell bedroom? Oh my God. Can, we'll get an image on screen while we're talking about yeah. it. I mean, it's the coolest thing ever. It's, does that yeah. characterise your style? Yeah, or, like, or your style back then even? I just love creating interiors that make you feel like a film star. Mm -hmm. And like, what movie would you live in? So for my shell bedroom, I just wanted to wake up and feel like I was in, I was like a 60s icon. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought this giant shell bed, yeah. um, found it on Instagram, like someone tagged me in it, 
um, the size of it, I can't believe it actually fitted like yeah. up the stairs. I mean, it's like a full, it's like a life size club, it's like, isn't it? It's yeah. huge. It's yeah. absolutely huge. Um, so I feel like Little Mermaid every day when I wake Love up. It. Have you and kept? You've moved house. Have you kept I've, the shelves? I've moved house. Yeah, and I left it there. Oh, got it. Well, Which I'm sort of. Someone's inheriting like a Disney themed bedroom. Yeah, so my friend's borrowing it for a bit. Um, But yeah, I just, I love to create space that makes you feel like an elevated version of yourself. I love that. I think that's a really good like messaging to remember if you're doing a house with you're doing a space. Um, What do you think is the key to good design kind of in general? I think the key to good design is it needs to come from a real place. Like I think people make the mistake of going on Pinterest and liking loads of stuff, but there's no sort of story or why mm. to it. So I always say like, do your research, you know, look for your wardrobe. What's your favorite piece of clothing? Like what's your favorite era, favorite film, favorite song? Mm. And then sort of pretend that's your client. Mm-hmm. So take yourself out of it mm. and just and just really elevate it. Like what would this person in this movie live like? What would they do? And that really helps. I, I love think. that idea. Yeah. Is it worth mood boarding that almost? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mood board it. And once you've got your vision and your story, it's really helpful to like get a big, white tray Mm. and then start ordering your samples all the different textures and i think like textures is the number one thing that makes the room look expensive okay and definitely vintage Mm -hmm. you chuck a vintage chair in a room yeah it's immediately looks more expensive okay so (laughs) let's start with vintage then how do you i mean i think vintage is quite scary for a lot of people particularly because it's so easy to buy you know high street things or like big name brands online when it comes to interiors so what are your tips for shopping interiors online where do you go where do you like um, for vintage on mm, there. For vintage. Uh, vintage interiors. I'm an eBay addict. Like it's sort of my part time mm. hobby. Like watch TV and sit on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do you look for specific things, or you're just kind of browsing? The best hack is mm. um, put in old. So like old chair, okay. old table. Because there's there's people that don't understand what they've got. Yeah. And it's quite a mission to yeah. go through that, but it's totally worth it. Like I've bought a £3,000 table for 50 quid Wow, and stuff like that. So become an explorer. And also, like, if there's something you love on Pinterest, look at the designer, Mm -hmm. look at the era. You can put those sort of times, that sort of 70s, 60s, whatever Mm. it is, or that designer or the place, that really helps. Um, But, yeah, just become a bit of a detective. You need to be patient Mm. for good vintage. And you have to really put the hours in, don't you? Big time, yeah. yeah. Um, You talked about textures. What what does that mean for the uninitiated? Kind of what what is key to creating lots of textures and getting that more expensive look? I think once you know the story of where you want to go with it, then you would look at what would work in that that sort of era or vibe that you're going Mm. for. So that could be like a, a nice rug that's like a jute, which is like a straw sort of mm-hmm. texture. And then if you wanted a wall that instead of going for a, a normal paint, you could get a paint with texture in it. Mm-hmm. Or wallpaper mm-hmm. is like such an amazing way to bring a texture and a print in. Um, so it's just layering up. If you're putting on a good outfit, mm. I say like interiors is exactly the same as doing a cool outfit. Mm. So just how you dress yourself, like a bit of shiny, yeah. a bit of silky, a bit of gold. Yeah, you it's know. Just, just like an outfit, <laughs> I love it. What about colour and print and pattern I mean that is your MO but a lot of people I think default to you know something a bit more neutral because they don't know where to start like it's quite hard to incorporate just a bit of print and colour isn't it you kind of have to do one or the other how how do you start you know if you're looking at a blank canvas of a room how do you start with print and colour so I design wallpaper so I absolutely love it so you start with poodle blonde (laughs) that's the tip yeah yeah (laughs) so start with my brand (laughs) but no I think wallpaper is a really good place to start because if you're nervous of colour and Mm. texture most wallpapers will have three or four colours in them. Mm-hmm. So immediately, there's your paints for your walls. Like, you can match that to mm. the wallpaper. And with wallpaper, what's great, you can really, you can do a feature wall mm. that's your little hint of it. Because wallpaper's quite expensive, right? For a whole room, it's a yes. lot. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's good. Like, wallpaper, a feature wall, mm. ceilings is the best hack ever. I'm about like, to do that. If you want to look like an interior designer, do the yeah. ceiling. I want to look like an interior it's designer. It's a vibe. <laughs> um, but also, like, the, the maximalist going down that route is I'd say styling odd numbers so like threes and fives is where you want to match up um pattern because okay. your brain just likes seeing okay. odd numbers so that means what have three shades in one room or five shades in one room like how what does that mean exactly? so on a sofa mm. if you're styling the sofa this is a print mm-hmm. so I would do two other printed cushions okay. with that but you want to change the scale so you do something that's like a bigger scale mm-hmm. and then something maybe smaller and then you can mix that with 
a plain colour. Okay, Hodge um, is taking interior notes for the <laughs> for the show set. Um, where do you start when you're looking at a room? Like, what what is you know what, what's the first thing that you buy? When I'm designing a room for anybody, I always look for the problem in the room. And I know that sounds mad, but mm. it's like, you know, some spaces will have like a weird corner that's jutting out that's hiding a pipe mm -hmm. or some awkward, just an awkward feature in a room. And that's often the magic spot of where you can build something custom. Mm. So that's whether you're going to create like a bonquette seating around it or position the bed there because then you can build something else. Mm -hmm. So there is sort of magic in the problems in a space. Okay. So I look at that. But I think the number one thing you want is function. Yeah. It's like, what do you like to do in this room? Do you like to have a party? Do you want to do tarot? Like, what do you want oh, to yeah. do? Oh, yeah. Tarot room. <laughs> Top of the list. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's like, what is your favourite thing to do yeah. in that space? And really tie that in because a room is as good as you feel good in it. Yeah, and it has so, to be functional, yeah. right? What is the biggest mistake you see people making with interiors? Panicking and looking too much at... Look, being external with it, like looking at Pinterest, looking at what other people are doing. And then you're just looking at so many different eras, so many different styles um, and just freaking yourself out. Yeah. So just really love, love what you love and keep it very tight yeah. and then buy stuff from that place. Otherwise, it's going to go mad. What's your favourite room you've ever designed? Um, probably my shell room, just because... I painted murals on the wall. I stuck like thousands of shells. So yeah. I did this, yeah. but imagine in shells. That's yeah, quite labour intensive. My I husband imagine. was like, I'm not getting involved. <laughs> Your problem. <laughs> I'm not doing it. How long did it take? To like two weeks. Oh, um, that sounds all right, yeah. Yeah, just gluing them on. <laughs> yeah, um, but it looks amazing. Yeah, and it's, I think interiors that have longevity and that you love has that touch yeah. that you've put in. So. Yeah. I want to talk about your brand in a moment, but first of all, other brands, you know, we, we talked about vintage for people who are looking for new things. Where do you go? Where, where do you love to shop for interiors? I think Soho Home is absolutely smashing it. Um, and they're really good inspo as well, mm. if, you know, to, to take from. But I really love shops like um, Lara Dutes really, it's got some affordable pieces mm -hmm. that are, they're quite on trend, but accessible. Um, I love Dun Elm. Mm. You honestly, that yeah. shop. Like, I've got a Dun Elm desk, <laughs> no shame in it. Yeah, I love it. So yeah. I think it's really about mixing high street and vintage. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, like a lot of um, sort of independent makers, it's really important to, to shop with them. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a girl called Tough Luck, mm -hmm. um, Cara, Cara. She makes amazing rugs and artwork, um, glass sets, amazing for getting. Amazing. Mm -hmm. A nice piece yes, as well. Agreed. Okay, well, we'll link everywhere below. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Poodle and Blonde. I'm a card carrying fan. I've got a blind <laughs> being made as we speak in the fabric. Um, what was the inspo and kind of how do you choose your prints and your patterns? Um, so I started the company with my best friend, Kira Campbell. Um, and we just love the feeling of when you see something, it feels nostalgic, but new. Mm. So it's really, it feels quite just warming and, mm -hmm. and familiar. So brand is really 70s inspired um and genuinely like when I come up with a new collection I will find myself start collecting weird new stuff okay. so I went through a horse phase of just collecting like horse objects mm -hmm. or ornaments and then that will turn into I've done a cowgirl range yeah of wallpaper. but it's also I love yeah. it I love the cowgirl stuff it's yeah. so Thank cool you. yeah so I really get inspired from like a feeling and me and Kira always are on the same okay vibe we're like True I'm into this at the minute and so yeah. she so that's where we get it from. Finally, changing rooms. Oh, where are we in the season? Is it finished? Is there more it's to come? Finished. It's I'm finished. Hot. I'm devastated. I mean, <laughs> I, I watched one in which well, we're going we're to talk about Lawrence Van Bowen again, but he did a he did a blue room and it was and then there were some white shelves and he kind of put all these fake books in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That one, that really like I mean, it's it's a creative show. <laughs> what, what was your best part about doing it? Just being with Lawrence, like I always say, I'm the protege that you didn't want or know about. <laughs> it's me. Yeah, like, huh? yeah, yeah. He calls me like his stalker, which I'm fine with. <laughs> sure, uh, take it. <laughs> but how he looks at a room, like I love his the the theatre he brings to it, and I think we've got a similar style. Like I like to elevate mm. stuff, and like that room you said, he's making bespoke madness. Yeah, at all times. Yeah. Um, so I loved working with him, and I love doing TV interiors because it's that. It feels, it's theatre, it's madness, it's chaos. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun to be in. Okay. Involved in. bet. Is there another season to come, can you say? Um, who knows? Fingers crossed. Okay. CBC. Yeah. All right. Winnie, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, that was so fun. Okay, next.
uh, when a very slick new Zara store opened minutes away from us in the brand new Battersea Power Station, we had to check it out. Keep watching to see what Laura and Florence got up to. I'm Laura Black, founding managing editor at Sherlux, and I'm here with Florence, our junior shopping editor, to have a look around the amazing new Zara store in Battersea Power Station. So let's have a look. We started in the women's wear section and the array of products here is phenomenal, full of amazing coats, knitwear, party wear. It really is all under one roof. This pussy bow blouse is definitely a keeper. They have these amazing boutiques off the side which feel really premium. The lingerie is gorgeous and wow. The shoe section is to die for. Those sparkly boots are definitely coming home with me. We then headed up to the kids wear section which was just amazing. So much amazing stuff for Christmas time and these cute cashmere baby sets are such an amazing gift. Finally, we headed to Zara home from Christmas to children's bedrooms to scents and more. It is not to be missed. Florence and I have picked out our favorites and we're gonna go for a quick try on. Excuse the sound, it is a little bit noisy up there but it's well worth it. So we have our pick of the store here. We're gonna do a bit of a try on. I mean, the shoes are what excites me the most. Those boots, I wanna take them home. They're awesome, amazing. Love this coat. How nice, I've gone for like all winter white chic vibes, but I love it. Oh no, we're totally different vibes. I know, I know, I'm, 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 I'm grown up work lady and you're the, the party part. How cool. They're awesome. They're so walkable. And they're well. also really comfy, aren't they? Yeah. I have gone super comfy, but I love the idea of wearing this on like a cozy Sunday, or tunnel Sunday at home. Oh, I feel grown up. Yeah, I like it. Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you borrowed your like grandpa's yeah, dressing gown. Oh my god, I love that. That's nice, isn't it? It looks much more expensive. Oh, yeah. What oh, would you wear on your feet with that? A long boot or like a black, black long boot. But I love the slip as a back. I really love that. This is my next look. Very monochrome. It's my ankle boots. Leathers. Simple white tee. And then this big play. Ooh, I like it. Love that shirt. Oh, what pick of the day. Party time. This jacket actually is very similar to the one I was wearing when I came here. And I'd say this is a fraction of the price and equally as nice. It's so soft. A nice winter outfit. Cozy. Ready for the temperature to drop in this. And the buttons here. The hover buttons are so gorgeous. Really nice make it look so premium. And the sleep detail coming out. Really nice. Ready? That it from us for now at the Battersea Power Station Zara store. It is mega. Links will be in the show notes below. And anything that's exclusive to the store, you need to hurry down and get it quick. Thank you to Laura and Florence. How insane does that Zara look? So, so nice. cool. It's like a proper like makes mm -hmm. you want to buy everything. I know, actually, it's just yeah. the corner. It's so nice. Um, any favourites? Winnie, did you spy anything that you like? Look Those silver sort of barbarella boots i need really me care. too yeah. so they are yeah. amazing yeah any other things that you guys spotted i think laura was wearing like a just a gray blazer but like the way it looked on her like she was like yeah. it's similar to what i was wearing when i walked here but i was just like oh, it's a good shape mm. <laughs> yeah very, very cool <laughs> yeah Cherry, anything else oh uh also the, like the sleeveless What's the word? Like a oh yes, that like I mean it was kind of like a sleeveless cardigan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I feel like that that was definitely yeah. not a cardigan. <laughs> but anyway. I was like, what I know cool. what you mean. It was cool. Yeah, very cool. cool. I like that. That is it for today. Thank you so much to Winnie, Polly, Sherry, and of course Patricia, Heather, Laura, Florence, and the rest of the Sherlock's team. We are back next week with fashion, Halloween, and a very important interview. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below. Do give us a thumbs up and do subscribe. Also, if you haven't already, have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye bye. Thank you.